Hello and thank you for joining us as we engage this clarion call to prayer as we approach the 2020 election and the 2021 Proctor Conference entitled Holy Rage, Holy Hope. We've been intentional in creating this space in this moment knowing that prayer is absolutely pivotal and essential to all of creation, hearing from and engaging the voice of God as we too communicate with the divine and receive further instructions as to how we are to approach and engage this moment and the days to come. Over the next few moments and hours, you will hear from men and women across the country as they pray, as they seek the voice of God on our behalf, as we as African-American people and just the people of God and God's creation endure this moment, engage our times and try to derive solutions that are communal and essential for our freedom and survival in America and the world at large. Again, we thank you for joining us here at the Proctor Conference for this time of prayer and community. We pray that this is a blessing to you, that you would share it with somebody else. And remember, holy rage, holy hope. Engage it, endure it, exercise it, and know that God hears you and God hears us. Be blessed. In her poem, Catch the Fire, poet Sonia Sanchez breaks the silence and says, Sometimes I wonder what to say to you in the soft afternoon air as you hold us all in a single death. I say, where is your fire? Can't you smell it coming out of our past? The fire of living, not dying. Where is our beautiful fire that gave light to the world? The fire of pyramids, the fire that burned through the holes of slave ships and made us breathe. Catch the fire, hold your fire, learn your fire, be the fire. Let us pray. God, we come to you today with our anger. Our anger about the trafficking of our youth, the murder of our men and women, and the violent erasure of trans and non-binary people. We come to you because our grandmothers, our aunties, uncles, cousins, friends, and partners have died and no one seems to care. We come to you because people keep telling us to forgive and reconcile with violence and oppression. We come to you because people keep telling us to be at peace with those who misgender us, imprison us, displace us, gaslight us, manipulate us, and we are furious. And so we come to you today so that we would know and be intimate with our anger, that we would not quench the Holy Spirit as she imbues us with holy rage, that when we are met with injustice, you will come down like a mighty rushing wind imbuing us with the same fire as in the book of Acts, that when we are met by disaster, you would imbue us with the same fire that was in the book of Exodus and in the book of Hebrews. And so I pray that when your presence falls, you would teach us how to trust ourselves, that we would not give way to our own emotional manipulation or self-betrayal, but we will be emotionally faithful to you, ourselves, and our communities. And in our faithfulness, I pray that you would make us aware of our own prophetic power, that you would teach us that we don't have to solely look to church leadership, but we will look to ourselves. That you remind us when we mourn, we are prophetic. That when we weep, we are prophetic. That when we are full of rage, we are casting a prophetic vision for the abolishment of the many manifestations of empire. And as we breathe fire through our prophecy, you would ignite and anoint us with a fresh hope. That you being the God of the oppressed and the disinherited, the God of our weary years and our silent tears, the God of those sisters in the wilderness, and you being the God of those dry bones are also the God of a steadfast love. And so I pray that your love for us would be our hope. In Jesus' name. <laughs> 